I was told by the uh, British general that um, as my father's son, I was going to be uh, made more comfortable. That was what the Germans had said. And so one, you know, they, they took that with a grain of salt. And uh, so when one got to Coley's, uh there was a very big question mark, but it was clear that we were, we were not being guarded for nothing, especially, and probably as hostages, which in fact is what turned out to be, be the fact. One of the last things Hitler did before uh, committing suicide was to uh, give orders for us to be dispatched. Uh, and so uh, the, we were, in fact, that's exactly what we were. How did you find the life there compared to the other camps? Well, I, it, it was the most lively camp in, in comparison, uh, full of life, full of, uh, full of wonderful spirit. And by that time, uh, escaping was out of the question. And uh, so people were really doing their own thing. And, and it was surprising, really. You thought, you thought really a lot of escapers and so on. They'd be uh, sitting down with uh, no escaping and, you know, men out of work, so not a bit of it. I mean, they all had lots of interests, great readers, they were great, you know, took part in amateur theatricals, uh, you know, listened to gramophone <coughs> records and so on, and uh, were a very lively lot and stimulating to be, and, and uh, a lovely spirit. When was it you arrived in college? Was it 44? Uh, yes, I arrived actually... Uh, I woke up on the morning of the 11th of November, 1944, uh, and uh, another officer uh, had been taken, brought in the same night, and uh, he arrived after I'd gone to bed. So I woke up and found him underneath me. It was uh, George Harwood, then Lord Lassell. Uh, uh, he was just, what, you know, he and I were the latest additions. So how many prominent you were there? Uh, I think seven, something like that. When I first got there, um, the following morning, um, uh, I met I, I, I met Miles Reed, who was um, he'd actually been a uh, uh, served in the First World War, so he was quite a veteran, and he'd been captured in Crete, and because of his age and so on, he was. You, not long after that, he was repatriated, and he was a ter terribly nice man. And he he warned me. He said he'd been uh, asked by uh, Colonel Willie Todd, who was our senior British officer, uh, to to see me to warn me that um, uh, that a, 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 a cavalry officer, uh, Stephen Wright, was going to give a lecture on my father, and which he'd uh, and he was not really. Uh, exactly recognized as a very distinguished military historian and perhaps that might be uh, 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 sensible if I didn't actually attend. So uh, I got early warning to that and I kept out of that. Uh, so, um, but uh, th that was the 11th of November, why they had planned this. And... But anyway, there were, uh, I mean, the, the, do you want to, you probably know all about who the prominenti were, did you? I mean, if you could remind us. Yes. Well, I mean, there was uh, the... I would lo look upon him as our, 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 our leader, if you like, was uh, uh, John Elphinston, the master of Elphinston, who was a um, black watch and uh, 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 very... He, he was the nephew of Queen Mother. And he, he was really... A, a very sensible, quiet uh, person, and um, uh, quietly sort of was there in the background. And uh, later on, when it came towards the end, he was uh, he was extremely um, unselfish as far as giving up a place to get to you know to to uh, uh, to let to let me stay behind with with Charlie. But I, that's another story a bit later. But no, there was John Elphinston. Uh, then there was uh, Charlie Hopeton, a later Lord in Lithgow, who, who was the son of, of um, uh, Lord in Lithgow, his, his viceroy. And there was um, 
uh, George Harwood, then Lord Vassals, I think still, uh, he was the uh, nephew of the king. Uh, and then uh, there was Giles Romney, who was uh, the nephew of, of Mrs. Winston Churchill. Um, and uh, he'd been a war correspondent, uh, ca captured in... in uh, he was a civilian. He was a civilian, and um, a very unmilitary person, but a charming dead dear friend. And uh, then there was uh, Michael Alexander, who we were talking about. Uh, Michael, who was the uh, the bogus nephew of, uh, of Lord Alexander, he'd taken on that that um, position in order to escape being. Uh, liquidated by the Germans because he'd been captured wearing a, uh, a, a, a German cap to keep the sun out of his eyes. He was actually a very distant relative, wasn't he? Or was he no relative I don't, I think the distance was pretty big. <laughs> but anyway, Michael, Michael had, um, you know, he was a very gallant officer and, uh, uh, he was, um, I think, uh, uh, not sure whether he, uh, whether he was, uh, quite what he was doing at the time when he was captured. Anyway, he, he no doubt he'll he'll, uh, uh, he'll he'll be interviewed by you and he'll describe his his um, his, his life because it's really quite interesting what happened to him and and, and he's great fun and he'd he'd love doing it. So do do uh, get him to do that. Was John Winnett there? John, uh, yes, John appeared. Uh, actually, he was paired towards the end, but just before we were taken away from Cody's. And, uh, so I didn't really get to know John really, but he, he, he was added to us just at the last minute, really. Uh, he, he, was, he was an American, and I think he'd been shot down and was put in, you know, amongst us just really at the end, really. He was uh, the son of the American ambassador. To London, that's right, yeah. And was there another Churchill. That's right. You're quite right. And uh, he uh, he was um, Max de Hamel, and Max was um, really not he, he was not a military figure at all. And and uh, uh, and uh, he was training for, had been training for the church. And I think he was going to go and live in Canada. I've never really seen him since, uh, but. Um, I, it had been, it been got around. I think he, he himself had told somebody that way back in the 17th century, his family had family links with Churchill's family. A very, very far-fetched affair. And I think his, uh, his, re his relationship with, with Churchill was pretty, uh, pretty. But anyway, that, he was, he was there with us as well. And then, of course, the Poles came, didn't they? Yes. Yes. Um, well, um, they they came, I suppose, about early February, and um, General Paul Komorowski was the, the leader of the war, Warsaw Uprising, and uh, he'd been a cavalryman. He jumped at Olympia before the war and so on. He was a uh, a very quiet, nice uh, pole, and he had, I think, two staff officers with him. And they were put into one of the rooms we'd been occupying and um, and came back with us so that uh, they they finished the war as prominently. But I think they, they not long after uh, they appeared at Cody's, um, the uh, German intelligence Plus, I think a representative of the uh, of the foreign foreign office, German foreign office, came to see him uh, to uh, see if they could put pressurize him really into getting uh, the um, uh, some of the members of this uprising uh, still underground, quite a lot of them, uh, um, to get to, to send out orders for them to to uh, give themselves up, and of course. Uh, General Ball refused that absolutely outright, and there was no good about it.